Many tutorials are using Fusion 360 solid modeling tools, but there's a much faster way to make a dodecahedron. In just a couple of minutes, you'll have a dice model ready to 3D print. We'll use Fusion 360 surface tools to quickly make the pentagon with the patch command. We'll then use a couple of other features to quickly position and pattern the sides. To finish off the dice, we'll stitch the surfaces together and we'll precisely place the numbers on each side. To get started, we need to create a new sketch on any one of the origin planes. A regular 12-sided dodecahedron uses a 5-sided pentagon for each face. Let's activate either the circumscribed or inscribed polygon. Either of these will work as we want to start from our center origin point, allowing us to fully define the sketch. The distance value is really up to you. I'll make my dice an overall width of 20 millimeters, so I'll use 10 millimeters for this length from center to vertex. We then want to hit the tab key to switch to the number of sides, where we'll type out 5. Let's then click to place the pentagon. I'll hit the escape key to clear all commands. You'll see if I click and drag on the shape, it will move around. We'll want to fully define our sketch by selecting one of the edges, followed by the horizontal constraint. This will ensure our sketch is locked in place. Now that we're done with the sketch, we can simply switch to the surface tab. Working with the surface tools will allow us to create the shape in fewer steps. The solid modeling approach would require several sketches to loft, the use of joints to position solid bodies, or a lot of combining and cutting bodies. To start, we simply need to turn this sketch into a surface body. We can activate the patch command in the toolbar and simply select our sketch profile, followed by the OK button. In the browser, we now have one infinitely thin surface body. A common surface modeling workflow is to create several surfaces that can be stitched together at the end to make a solid body. To create the next body, we'll use the move slash copy command by right clicking and selecting that from the top of the list. Notice you can also use the shortcut letter M as in Mike. Our copy body will be in the same location, so we'll set the move type to the rotate option. We can then select one edge of the pentagon as the rotate axis. Before we type out a degree, let's check the create copy option, which will create a copy of the original surface body. The dihedral angle of a dodecahedron is 116.56505 but we can simply round up to 116.6. We can then click OK to confirm the position of the copied body. Notice how we now have two surface bodies in the browser. At this point, we could follow the same process, but we can also save time by using the circular pattern command. We'll first select the outer face that we want to pattern, and then we need to switch to the axis selector. This is why we needed our initial sketch to be constrained to the origin point. We're now able to reference the center axis without having to create one. Lastly, we need to type out 5 for the quantity. Once we click OK, you'll see that we now have half of the dodecahedron and we have a total of 6 surface bodies in the browser, one for each face. There are many different approaches to creating the second half. I like the simplest route, which is to copy and paste the six surface bodies. We can simply hold down the shift key and select the first body, followed by the last body in the browser. Once they're all selected, we'll use the shortcut letter M as in Mike for the move slash copy command. Let's first switch the move type to the free move option, followed by checking the create copy option. I want to use free move as we simply want to drag this rotation slider to flip this 180 degrees. That will simply flip this upside down. We can then switch the move type to the point to point option, which allows us to simply click two points that we want to touch. In our case, we simply need to select a vertex of each half, and just like that, we have placed the second half in the correct position. 
In the browser, we now have all 12 sides represented as surface bodies. You may see that some of the faces are yellow, which simply means that the surface body is flipped around. You can use the reverse normal command to fix this. However, since we're going to turn this into a solid body, this is not necessary and it is just a visual difference. In Fusion 360, solid bodies are technically watertight, whereas surfaces are infinitely thin and they are not connected unless we stitch them together. We'll use the stitch command and we can then shift click all of the surface bodies in the browser. Notice in the stitch dialog, the operation is set to new body and it is the solid body icon. If stitched surface bodies result in a completely closed surface, then Fusion 360 will automatically convert them into a single solid body. That's exactly what we want for the dice so that we can use the solid modeling tools to create the rounded edges and the numbers on each face. Pay close attention to what happens to each surface body in the browser as I click OK in the stitch dialog. Notice how all 12 bodies are stitched together and this is turned into a single solid body. Using this workflow, we were able to create a solid dodecahedron with only a single sketch and a handful of other features. That allowed us to avoid using the loft command, joints, or other complicated workflows with the solid tools. We still ended up with a solid body, which means that we can switch back to the solid tab where we can use the fillet command. Adding fillets will give us a nice rounded edge so the dice isn't sharp. With the fillet command active, I'll click and drag over the entire model. This will select all the faces and edges. We can then define a radius of 2 or 3 millimeters, which will give us nice rounded edges. We can now use Fusion 360's recently updated text feature as a way to add numbers to each side of the dice. Be sure to check out my text video to learn how to get the most of the text command. In our case, we simply need to create a new sketch on one of the faces. After activating the text command, we need to click to place the first point of the text frame. Where we click doesn't matter as we'll use constraints to position it. Let's just click in the lower right for the opposite corner. I'll start with the largest number, which is 12, to ensure the size will fit. We can make the font bold or change the font to something like Arial Black. For now, let's change the height to 8 millimeters, followed by the OK button. Right now, our sketch text frame can be moved around. Let's use the coincident constraint to lock it to the straight edge on the top. We'll select the left corners, followed by the right corners. Lastly, we need to position the bottom. This is where you'll have to decide how large you want your numbers to be. I found that most dice line the bottom of each number with this vertex, so I'll select the bottom line of the text frame, followed by the vertex. The sketch is now fully defined. However, we need to edit the position of the text. We can simply double click on the text to edit the alignment and other details. We'll use Align Center and the Align Bottom options. Our text is now carefully positioned. All we have to do is activate the Extrude command from the Solid tab, select the text, making sure not to select the face of the dice. We can then extrude to negative 2 millimeters, which will cut the text out of the solid body. At this point, you'll need to repeat the same process for each side of the dice. I'll place a link below to a reference image on how the numbers are laid out. You can also download my dice file for free via the link below or in the pinned comment. Once all the numbers are complete, we can also add a fillet to the inner edge. This is great if you want to fill in the numbers with a paint pen or marker. Simply select all the faces of each number and add a 0.5 to 1 millimeter fillet depending on your chosen text size. We can now right click on the top level component, which allows us to select Save as STL. You can then export and name the file before opening it in your chosen slicer. Last but not least, I want to give a quick shout out to all the new patrons and supporters who bought me coffee in the last few weeks. 
special thanks to everyone who helps me continue on my mission of making CAD education accessible to all. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future tutorials and click on that playlist in the lower right corner to get started with some other 3D printable projects.